Welcome to Digital Asset News. I get top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, lots of great stuff. First up, OCC Chief Brian Brooks is too focused on crypto, argue US representatives. And at first glance, I thought this was a primary case of partisanship. When I dug deeper into it, it really is a fantastic opportunity to collaborate and work together. Also, Ripple's Brad Garlinghouse disses Bitcoin's energy use in advance of Biden administration. And what he has to say is kind of far-fetched, but kind of makes sense in a certain way. And here's a story that's been going around for quite a bit. A time billionaire hedge fund investor Drunken Miller says he owns Bitcoin in CNBC interview. This is a couple days old, but I wanted to cover it because it just kind of goes on and adds on to what we've already been talking about is that people are finally starting to wake up. And finally, we're going to go over a Q of the day where Beth asks a pretty good question I never really thought about, which is, why is your website free? And we'll go over all of that. Uh, but first, take a look what's going on the market. So today is November 11th. It's about uh, 4 p.m. Texas time. And we've got Bitcoin almost going to hit 16K. Uh, let's see if we can do it today. It's an interesting day. Uh, things have been building. You kind of feel it in the air, a little magic. And uh, hopefully it can uh, push through. We'll see. So it's at 15.7 right now, up 2.3 for the day, 12% for the week. Uh, fantastic. Ethereum uh, riding high in that news about the uh, Ethereum 2.0 launch on December. 1st and be able to stake your 32 ETH. Again, I'm not doing it, but uh, it is up uh, almost 3% and 20% for the week. So Ethereum holders, congratulations. This is your time. Tether's Tether, uh, 17 billion. XRP, wow, 25 cents. Still holding strong. Still holding strong. Chainlink, down a little bit, but it's at 13 bucks. So pretty happy. Bitcoin Cash is doing pretty well. Polkadot, hey, Polkadot's at 450. I don't know if anybody knows this, but uh, it's up 12% for the week. Not too shabby. Binance coin, Litecoin up 2.4, Cardano 0.2. You know, Cardano, it's always around 10 cents. I wonder when it's actually gonna start to really, really uh, push forward. They've done a lot of great announcements, a lot of things that are going on. They're actually, um, this was the first week where they were truly decentralized, where they had 51% of the nodes actually processing the transactions on top of that ERC20 converter. I mean, <laughs> it's doing good, 10 cents. Uh, what else we got? EOS, sure, wrap Bitcoin, eh. Let's see. No, 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 no. Okay, B's up 1.9. That's fantastic. And then down here, it's kind of like eh, the doldrums. Not really too great. Wow, synthetics took a beat in today. 12%, but up 62% for the week. So not too bad. And where is my fave? Aha, uh -huh, yeah. Celsius Network. Almost at two bucks. I'm telling you. I got to tell you. I got to tell you. I think it's going to go up above $2 this week. It's up 40% in the seven day average. And it is uh, it's a fantastic product. Um, that's the network itself. That's the token. I personally have 30% on the platform. That's really the big stuff. So uh, let's jump into the day's articles. So first up, this one really is fascinating. OCC chief or the office of the control of the currency, Chief Brian Brooks, who was from Coinbase, don't forget, is too focused on crypto, argues the U.S. reps. And I think this is just ignorance uh, in how cryptocurrency and digital assets work or just the fine details. I think people know kind of what it is, like, why are you doing with Bitcoin? Who cares about Bitcoin? Help us out. Trust me, this can help everybody. So what's going on here? So six members of Congress yesterday sent a letter, quote unquote, blasting according to the PR office of one of the authors, Brooks for busying himself with regulating the cryptocurrency industry amid a pandemic. The OCC helmed by Brian's uh, or Brooks since April 2020, put out several letters of classification this summer that confirmed that crypto companies could become banks and that banks could become custody of cryptocurrencies owned by their clients, which is a great prospect. But, uh, you know, there was a great article by Alex Masco. That's how I met that guy. And he pretty much said, <laughs> that's not going to happen. Banks aren't going to innovate. They don't move fast. What are you, crazy? And he was right. And here we are. And, of course, we've got the other banks, Kraken and uh, Avanti. They are really coming on strong going, hey, we've got a special depository and we're just right behind you, bank. So you're about to get blockbustered. So... The lawmakers, Rashid Tlaib, Democrat, Stephen Lynch, Democrat. I mean, they're all Democrats, right? I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, right? I know some people are Republicans on this channel. Some are Democrats. Some people are independents and some people don't care. But uh, that is that is what it is. And this is not a political channel. I'm just going to say that right now. It's not a political. I do not want to get in politics. There's two things you never talk about. Politics and religion messes everything up. So when I first read this, I'm like, man, what is wrong with these people? But when I, when I got into it, I'm like, oh, this, is, this isn't what's wrong with them. They just don't know. They just don't get it. This is a perfect opportunity to bring everybody together and like, 
I hear your concerns. I know exactly what you're saying. I need a little bit of help of what you're really trying to say. And here's where I think we can help. And let's meet in the middle. This, I'm telling you right now, perfect opportunity. Hopefully Brian gets it. So we'll move down. I'll tell you in a bit. So arguably, the immediate needs of millions of at-risk individuals who have not yet received an economic stimulus check and or cannot deposit their funds in a bank deserve greater attention than an effort to increase access to financial services to the bank community via mobile phones, they said. And of course, this is just a snippet. We're going to take a look at the actual letter itself, and I'm going to break it down real quick, just the, just the basics, and I'll tell you, you know, what they really said and how this can really lead to a great opportunity. The members of Congress further said focus on crypto overlooks issues facing small and minority owned institutions exacerbated by the coronavirus pandemic. And of course, you read that, you're like, ah, they're just doing their own thing. And th th look, this is what they said. So this is great. So here was the letter that was put out yesterday to Brooks. And of course, it was all uh, that group that put it out there. And they said, hey, we urge the controller to seriously reconsider the implications of a unilateral approach. So what they're saying is, hey, don't just go off on by yourself. Let us all talk about it. Maybe we can help each other. And instead, invite the OCC to collaborate with other regulators and Congress on these issues. Basically, what they're saying is like, let us just sit at the table. We just want to talk. According to the most recent FDIC survey conducted in 2017, 6.5% of Americans are unbanked and 18% of Americans are underbanked. That's a problem. And then, of course, of these, 66 minority bank closures represent 30% of all minority banks, which is what they're saying. That's a statistic. Great. We believe there's an, an imminent danger that while seeking to serve those already banked, i.e. me and you, people who are investing in cryptocurrency assets with better payment options, we may be overlooking opportunities for assisting the unbanked and underbanked to participate in the economy and the banking system. So I'm going to stop right there. What does that sound like? That sounds like the exact same things cryptocurrencies and digital assets are trying to do. Help the underbanked and the unbanked. I mean, Stellar's always talking about it anyhow. And then when we talk about cell phones, I had on Minute, Minute, Minute from Votes. And because we were talking about how does this all work as far as like voting? Because, I mean, underprivileged people, how does that work out? He's like, well, it's kind of weird because... In the United States, we have a lot of people who have access to cell phones, but they don't have access to a lot of other things because cell phones are cheaper than what it was uh, back in the heyday or back in the day. So again, if you are underbanked or you can't get banked or you don't have the, the documentation, but guess what? You do have a cell phone. What can you do? Well, you can buy cryptocurrency digital assets. And then some people will say, well, how do you do that? Because don't you have to have a, a bank attached to uh, your uh, the app or whatnot? Well, here's how they do it in Africa. They go to convenience stores. They, they, they fork over their money. They get a card, a prepaid debit card. That prepaid debit card they put into the system, and that's what they use to buy cryptocurrencies. The same type of thing could be happening here. And on top of that, all the different problems that we had with getting all that money, which is a lot of money, when we do it for the, for the stimulus checks, well, guess what? Wouldn't it be fantastic if we didn't have to go through the banking system, which is archaic and slow anyhow, and just go, hey, we had this on a distributed ledger and we can get it out to you way faster than what it's going to take. Oh, and another thing is if you have problems getting it or if uh, there's different uh, issues with your tax records because whatever reason, well, that's OK, because at least we have your phone. Now, again, some people are going to say, hey, I don't want big, uh, big pharma or <laughs> Big Pharma. I don't want uh, uh, Big Brother knowing exactly everything I, I'm into. Sure, maybe you don't have to. Maybe there's a middle ground. But again, when I read this type of thing, I'm like, I just don't think they get it. They they hear Bitcoin, and again, it's just like everybody else out there. Like, oh, Bitcoin's going up. It's a stock. It's. I mean, really, that's how people think of Bitcoin. Just like a stock. I trust me. I was talking to my brother. He's an idiot, and that's all he thinks about. So if they understand how everything works, this is just where education comes in. Anyhow, small minority-owned financial institutions continue to face a deposit crisis, exactly what we were just talking about before. Moving down, we also question whether there is an appropriate priority for the OCC in the midst of this pandemic. And again, um, so they're saying, like, why should you deal with that when you have all these different uh, archaic old banks that really need to have, have a liquidity crisis and you should work on that? But they don't get it. They don't get it right now. We can do both. We can do both, but this is the future and this is how we should move forward. And that's what the beauty of Brian being in there. He's got a golden opportunity to bring everybody together and go, look, this is why. Here's education. Here's what we're going to do. And I remember he had, he was on, 
he was on Unchained with Laura Shin, and he talked about he, they have this uh, this education series on their site. So I'm like, just send them to the site. But not only that, just bring them together and, and talk it out. So lastly, this was this was the crux of it. I didn't understand what was going on until I read these questions. I'm like, oh, they just don't get it. So it says here, with the permission granted to banks to now use bank deposits as reserves against stable coins, will these reserves be segregated from calculating the capital requirements of banks such as JP Morgan Chase and Wells Fargo? Or will they be able to lend against these deposits? So again, I don't know if they understand that stable coins are pegged to the dollar and it's not like you can just start to, you know, double, triple, quintuple, and just go, you know, gangbusters. It has to be pegged to something. That's the whole stable coin. And, they, and then they make a good point. What about consumer protections? Will the OCC impose on the stable coin providers? But Brian has already talked about this. He's like, our job shouldn't be to innovate. We're not good at innovation. We're just the government. What we should do is regulate. That's the only thing we're good at. And I agree. Look, I know people hate regulation when I talk about it, but I'm just telling you, I like a little regulation. Regulation's like cake. One slice is fine, just don't go overboard and make everybody sick. And then they said, considering a stablecoin issuer will likely be willing to move large amounts of reserves between different banks, will stablecoin reserves be treated as brokered deposits subject to applicable restrictions on banks accepting them? Same type of thing. Maybe they're working about worry about money laundering, but remember, it's stablecoins pegged to the dollar. You can't make more stablecoins than there actually are dollar bills in the world. And how do you plan to protect the, the notion of the dollar itself? And that this will be private money used for payments digitally and therefore subject to potential losses. Losses should the stablecoin provider go out of business. There's always this saying about if a business goes out of business that's working in uh, digital assets. Uh, Ripple is a primary example. They've always said the same thing. If we go out of business, XRP will still survive. It's still on a distributed ledger. And that's that. The Ethereum Foundation, same type of thing. EOS, I mean, go down the line. So with stable coins, they really are centralized. That is one of the problems. But moving forward, maybe there's some kind of uh, middle ground they can reach. And the last one, since the Federal Reserve Bank has strategically used its control of the money supply in times of stress to address inflation, what is the OCC's assessment of the likely impact of diluting the Federal Reserve Bank's authority and effectively transferring the control of our money supply to stablecoin providers. Again, that's not what that's that's not what it is. It's you can only have so many stablecoins pegged to whatever monetary fiat unit that you're talking about. So again, I think this is a great opportunity just to bring everybody together and go, hey, this is what it is, this is what we got, this is how we can help everybody, and it's gonna work everybody out. We'll do both things, but this is the direction we should go. Anyhow, we understand in the comment section, let's move on.